much, Dr. Pohana. Uh, I want, first of all, to thank you, all of you, especially Mayor Jackson, uh, the opportunity of being here today, uh, remembering the celebration in Mexico of a battle uh, between French and Mexicans, and we won it. So that was good. <laughs> That's why we celebrated. We lost the war, and then we had an emperor from France, and then we kicked him out. I want to present you a little semblance, a little trajectory. What am I doing here? And I will tell you a little history. First of all, I was reading the paper today in the morning, and then there was, on the first page of the newspaper, remarks made by Karen Mockler, who happens to be the Chief of Director of Public Health for Cuyabal County, stating definitely, without any hesitation or doubt, that obesity and diabetes are the main menaces for the health in the United States. Just forget about criminal, the United States. And he stated also our goal, meaning the municipality, Cleveland City at large, is to create a change in culture. And this is an opportunity to me to talk about a change in culture. Not only diversity, not only the fact that we are celebrating a battle and so on. It is because these menaces affect each and every one of our communities. There are some disparities, certainly. African Americans and Mexican Americans and Hispanics at large. We suffer more from diabetes than white Anglo-Saxons. However, there's also the Native American Indians who suffer even more so than us. This is a disease that affects the whole population. Just briefly, some numbers. By 2030, 2030, meaning 18, 20 years from now, it is estimated that there will be 60 million American citizens with diabetes. There will be 180 million American citizens that suffer from obesity and its consequences. This is not trivial. This is real. This is authentic. This is affecting adults, but unfortunately, more and more and more, we find it in children who are making diagnosis of diabetes type 2 in youngsters, like the ones that I have right in front of me. He's looking at me. You don't have diabetes, I hope. But you will see that in 20 years, in children that become adults, one out of two that are African Americans will have diabetes. One out of two Hispanics will have type 2 diabetes. This has to be stopped. And I borrow once again the words of Karen Butler. When do we have to start? Now. Not yesterday. This is the moment. What am I going to do? Me alone, nothing. I can do nothing. I'm just one person, but it is you. The whole community has to come together. For example, I want you to take a look at what a diabetic patient needs. A patient with type 2 diabetes needs a doctor, obviously a primary care doctor, but also an endocrinologist like me, so I can have a job. They need a cardiologist, they need an ophthalmologist, they need nurses, diabetes educators. The doctors need a psychiatrist because they need someone to take care of the depression of the doctors, right? They also need gastroenterologists. And what happens is that the type 2 diabetic patient, on Monday, on January the 1st, he sees the endocrinologist. Two days later, he goes and sees the ophthalmologist. And then two weeks later, an appointment with the cardiologist, and then the gastroenterologist, and then the neurologist, and so on, and on, and on, and on. They spend 50% of their lifetime during one month visiting doctors. And one doctor is in Westlake, and the other guy is in uh, Chagrin Falls. But the diabetologist is in Metro Health. So now he has to drive a lot. So the care is dispersed. It's all over the place. There's no consonance. There's no unification of efforts. And I think that that is what Metro Health has called me to do. To try to put together the pieces of the puzzle into a single effort that engages not only the doctors, but also nurses, diabetes educators, but most important, you, the community including the government, 
including the teachers, including carpenters and plumbers, architects, engineers. Why Cleveland? How did I end up over here, for Christ's sake? Well, besides the diabetes and the obesity and the fact that they offered me a position in Metro Hill and then they welcomed me in a fantastic manner. And ever since I arrived to this place, Cleveland, it has been a non-stop welcome. I cannot believe that. I haven't worked a single day. I've been here and there. Okay. Why? Because Cleveland is enormously gratifying as a society. They are really warm people. My wife is here and she told me, I love this place. I told her, well, we have to find a place where to live. And we have a big problem with that. Because we talk to the West people that they tell us, go to the East. They will go to the East and they tell us, no, the West. And in the middle, the downtown is going really big on home. Condominiums, departments. Okay, and then you go to Tremont, near Metro, and it is booming. And then you go now to other areas, and it's fantastic. The whole area is full of nice places. Okay, so we are having a problem in choosing where to live. Everywhere we find Clevelanders, and everybody is nice with us. I started my journey back in Mexico. I became a doctor. I learned how to be an internist. Then I wanted to learn more because there was a lot of that in the so I came to Yale University and that's 5,000 miles. And then I fell in love with the research enterprise. Yale University is a big top-notch university and I fell in love with research and academic life. I took a position in the University of Vermont and not because of the weather, believe me. Vermont has two very clear cold seasons. Okay? It has winter that goes all the way from October to May, then a brief summer in May, and then back to winter. It is gorgeous a scenario, but that, not, that's not what helped me. What helped me was the academic life, the research, the push, the knowledge, the looking for new things, and so on. Wake Forest University then hired me. I went to North Carolina. The spring is gorgeous over there. The summer is a dream. The fall is fantastic. And the winter is mild. Sometimes they have snow, sometimes they don't have. So, my friend Patrick Catalano at Metro Health invites me for interviews in Metro Health. I come in January. Oh my God. I see cold, snowy, and I came without a jacket. I didn't have it. But once I crossed the doors of Metro Health, the winter is gone, and people come to me and greet me, and I find a summer over there. So I decided to come to Cleveland with this challenge, and the challenge is to put efforts together to create a battlefield, a new celebration of May the 5th will be next year, when all of us are together getting our weapons getting our efforts, our energies, to really defeat these two epidemics which are threatening our health as a nation, obesity and diabetes. Ah, I was forgetting about some things that brought me to Cleveland. Okay. Once again, not the weather. I stumbled across a place called the West End Market. Who knows that? Who knows the Western market? It is just a phenomenal place. I mean, the food is gorgeous over there. Then I found pathways where I can hide from the city if I don't like it. They call them metro parks. The metro park system is unbelievable. You can walk miles and miles and miles and miles, and the only thing you see is yourself, some deer that are lost over there, and the river, the rocky river. Really phenomenal. I love Seventh Hall. That symphony is fantastic. Cleveland at its best. And then we went to the beach. And then we found the ocean. I, I'm sorry, it's not the ocean. A lake, for Christ's sake. But I couldn't see the edge of the lake. Lake Erie. It's magnificent. It's just gorgeous. I learned about La Plaza Market. For those of you who are really Hispanic, very good food over there. I went and found Beachwood, and in Beachwood, the bagels of babies, the Jewish strength and the culture that I adore also. More important, so far, in
in the moment that I have been the pleasure of being in Cleveland, I have found the pleasures or the warmth welcomes of everyone that we have met in our paths. And I think I speak for my wife, my son, and my daughter who soon, soon to come over here. I want you to be, continue to be like that. I might want to suggest that you can change the name of Cleveland. Instead of Cleveland, it should be called Cleverland. The land of the clever, the intelligent, the smart, the strong people. We can set the pace for the change as Karen Butler wanted us to do for the rest of the nation. We can come together, we can defeat obesity, diabetes. Y finalmente quiero hablar un poquito en español para que hablan en español, así que el medio no me va a entender. ¿Quiénes hablan en español aquí? Todos ustedes, bueno, casi, casi la mayoría. I'm sorry, Mayor Jackson. But he promised to me that he was going to learn Spanish. <laughs> he, went, he went to Costa Rica in the Central America, and then he came back by himself in a tour and was fortunate to find Fortuna, Fortuna City that was now destroyed by a volcano called the Poles. And I promised to him, before the end of September the 16th, he will visit Mexico and he will be my guest over there. Maybe not in the municipal hall because I'm not mayor of Mexico City, but at least in the house of my parents, we will receive you over there. So I want to finalize my keynote speaker moments that you were so grateful to grant me. Uh, thanking the people that invited me, Mary, Dr. Apujana, Lucy, and uh, I don't remember your first name, Eduardo, and uh, all of you for being here. We're celebrating Hispanic heritage, and I love it. But we also want to celebrate the fact that we are here in this country, which is so benevolent to us and so, so full of opportunities that I want to thank uh, uh, also our uh, American uh, white Anglo Saxons and my friends my cousins, my African-American friends, because I really identify with you all the way through. So, thank you very much, I appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed this celebration. Have a good day.